This is Electronic Tonic here, and for a number of years I've had this old book here, copyright 1966, General Electric Glow Lamp Manual, Theory, Circuits, and Ratings. And it's got lots of interesting information, general information and specific information on neon and argon glow lamps. Um, it's got you know voltage regulator circuits, relaxation oscillators, and what's really interesting is digital logic gates. I think it's absolutely amazing that you can make digital logic gates using just a bunch of neon glow lamps and and uh, resistors and maybe some uh, a, tra a transistor or two. But um, basically, what I'm focusing on here is in the top left hand corner of this um, they say that if placed in storage for prolonged periods of time some glow lamps experience a rise in initial breakdown voltage subsequent breakdowns may be at or close to the original level this phenomena is called standing rise and when it occurs can cause a change occasionally above 5 volts from those breakdown values experienced prior to storage so basically what I want to do is take some old neon lamps that haven't been used in many years and turn them on for the very first time in in many years and see if this standing rise effect really does happen and it just so happens that I took apart some equipment recently and they had these old neon lamps inside the neon the nice neon lamp sockets um, these sockets actually have a built-in 26 kilo ohm resistor uh, because neon lamps almost always need a series resistor um, otherwise there will be a, a runaway cascade effect that will destroy the lamp um, if you were to just plug it into 120 volts and here's a closer look at the lamps inside the sockets you can see we've got part number NE51H and part number GEB2A and this also has KR85 written on the bottom there. That's that means that there's Krypton 85, a small amount of Krypton 85 in addition to the neon gas. And um, Krypton 85 is a mildly radioactive isotope of Krypton, and uh, they put that in there to keep the keep the gas inside partially ionized because. Um, it just it, that's that's how it operates. You know, the gas gas needs to have some some source of ionization in order for it to work um, initially, in order for it to turn on, um, either from just regular light shining on it like this, or ultraviolet, or gamma rays coming from outer space, or any any kind of ionization. It needs to be partially ionized uh, to turn on when you apply a voltage. And you can see I've got one already turned on here, plugged into 120 volts with the uh, built-in resistor, of course, inside the base, and I mean inside the socket. And it's just two metal rods in there sticking up. There's no filament, and it's and it's only the cathode, the uh, negative terminal that ever glows. But since I have it hooked up to AC, then that's why you see both of them glowing. And also, I don't know if you can see it but maybe there's a little bit of strobing or oscillation from one to the other um, one of them goes dim periodically and the other one stays bright and that's just a, a camera effect here's the experimental setup I have I've got this old-school Kepco uh, regulated DC power supply it goes up to one kilovolt and uh, it actually has a vacuum tube in there to regulate the high voltage and on top of that I've got a Fluke 189 with the uh, neon lamp and, um, and a series resistor mounted right up there so we can look at the voltage and see when the lamp turns on in the same camera shot so I'm just gonna put on maximum mode and turn it on. I can do this real quick because as soon as it turns on that'll be the maximum voltage and then the voltage across the lamp will drop down. Hmm. Had a little problem there. I was, I was surprised I got to 125 volts and that was the end of the 
the range so let me I already turned down the uh, the fine adjust knob so I'm going to crank up the range switch to the the next range of, uh, of a 0.1 to 0.2 kV and you can see now it should yeah there we go 82 volts it's at and put it back on maximum mode and continue slowly turning up the voltage there we go it got up to 128 volts is what it took to turn it on and um, then it dropped down to about 66 volts all right I brought in some extra light a 500 watt incandescent bulb here to uh, shed some extra light on it so you can get a better get a better view of seeing exactly what I see uh, you know so the the LED I mean so the uh, the neon glow is not overexposed in the camera and um, in the couple minutes since it's been on the uh, the voltage has dropped down to about 65 volts and it'll probably continue to drop very slowly um, one thing I've noticed too was that the the actual area that's being covered by the glow discharge has increased a little bit. At first it was just a very tiny point and um, it steadily spread out and I'm sure if I leave it on long enough it will spread out even more. Um, so there you go, 65 volts now. Alright, I turned it off and now I'm going to crank it back up again and see if it actually does turn on at 5 volts less than the 128 that the, uh, the glow lamp manual claimed it would do and it looks like I have to switch to the next highest range on the power supply This was at 129, so pretty much the same voltage. Um, so I guess the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it in one of the sockets and hook it up to 120 volt AC and leave it on for a few few hours, a few days, a few weeks if I need to. Um, and another thing that I'm going to do while I'm leaving it turned on for a long time is to see. Um, you know what kind, how the uh, you know how much area of you know, how much glow area is covered up by the electrodes. Let me plug it in here and do 120 volt AC, and you can see how the, uh, the left terminal is is uh, turned on at it's glowing at the tip of it, and then over here the right terminal is just glowing a little bit on the in the middle portion of it, and and I think since I've had it plugged in in the past few seconds, it's actually they've actually started to to grow a little bit, grow a little bit in size. And so if I leave it on long enough, you know, hopefully they'll the the uh, glow area will continue. You know, that's another effect of glow lamps that haven't been used in 10 or 20 years. That um, probably 20 years these things haven't been used. So. Um, glow lamps that haven't been used in such a long time um, they'll be very spotty the uh, terminals the the glow pattern will be very spotty when you first plug it in but if you leave it on long enough then hopefully this one will end up looking like that and we'll see what happens see you next time thanks for watching